Imagine you're deploying a Node.js application only to discover it's riddled with security vulnerabilities, all because of the Docker image you chose. Sounds like a developer's nightmare, right? Well, welcome to our deep dive on picking the best Node.js Docker image, where we'll show you how to avoid this common pitfall and secure your projects effectively. Stay tuned to learn the ins and outs of Docker images and how tools like Sneak can be your secret weapon in this crucial decision-making process. When choosing a Node.js container image, the goal is to find a balance between performance, size, and security. It's not just about running your app, it's about running it well. But before we go deeper, if you're searching for a quick answer, here's what we suggest. For most users, you wanna use the image, the base image, node colon, the LTS version, which as of the recording of this video, it's gonna be 20.11.0 hyphen bookworm hyphen slim. This particular base image offers a good balance of performance, size, and security like we were just mentioning before. Outside of that, if you're up for creating your own distroless image, that will give you a more precise solution. Just know that going distroless requires you to maintain your base image on your own, including keeping up with things like CVEs that are coming out and other vulnerabilities, packages that need to be updated, all of that maintenance is up to you. So you choose whether you wanna go that route or not. But for those of you who want to understand more about why this is the answer, keep on watching. Here's a typical Docker file for a Node.js application. You might notice it's using a base image that seems convenient, but it can actually be problematic due to its size and potential security vulnerabilities. The size of this typical base image is 1.1 gigabytes, which is relatively big and indicates that there is likely more included in it than is needed for your application. Now, considering the security, a typical node-based image with the latest tag might have hundreds of dependencies and security issues packed into it. To understand the security implications, we turn to Sneak, which is a powerful tool for scanning and identifying vulnerabilities in Docker images. By setting up a free Sneak account and using the CLI tool, you can uncover and address these security issues efficiently. So to get started using Sneak, you can go about it installing it in ways like you might be used to. In this case, I'm a Node developer. We're using Node npm install globally Sneak. Once you have Sneak installed, you're going to run Sneak auth to log into your Sneak account. So you use Sneak auth to sign into your Sneak account, which will open up your browser. You sign in there. Once you're done, it'll tell you that you can close that tab and go back to your terminal. From there, once you're logged into your Sneak account, and you're able back into your terminal, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the image you want to scan is built before you scan it with Sneak. So you would run something like, in this case, for this project that I have, I'm gonna run Docker build from the current directory and tag it with the name Node.js Goof. Once your image is built, now we can use Sneak to scan and test that container for us. And the way we do that is with the following command. We run Sneak Container Test, the name of the image, and then the location of the Docker file for that image. When Sneak Container Test is done running, one, you're gonna probably see a wall of text of all the different vulnerabilities and issues that are possible. But within there, you're gonna find that it calls out your base image, which is in my case, node 14.1.0, the total number of vulnerabilities, which is over a thousand, and then the severity level of each of those vulnerabilities. But below that is where there's key information for us to fix and address those vulnerabilities for us in the container that we're relying upon. And that's where these recommended base images are below. There's minor upgrades, major upgrades, or alternative type images that we could use. As you can see, we can significantly address a huge number of those vulnerabilities by just bumping up to a different minor upgrade, like 1421.3 here, gets us down to 478 vulnerabilities. But you really wanna take a look at the alternative image types. Make sure obviously that your application can still run with those alternative image types, but they should be very closely related to what you have. Maybe you wanna use Node 21 if you can upgrade to that or find a slim version of that current Node version that you're using right now, that image. And that'll help you knock down some of the vulnerabilities that you have in your container using Sneak. So speaking of trying to pick alternative image types for your application, how do you know which one to choose? What's this bookworm? What's this bullseye slim? What are the differences between that? Well, let's go through that right now. So if you go exploring the Docker hub, you'll find tags like node buster, node bullseye, node bookworm. Each corresponds to a different Debian distribution version of Linux. Bookworm is the most recent stable version of Debian at the time of this recording. It's essential to choose an image that not only fits your needs, but also has a manageable security profile. For those seeking slimmer images, the node slim tags compromise functionality and size, drastically reducing the image footprint and the number of vulnerabilities. 
It contains only the minimal packages needed to run Node.js in this case. So some of what you'd find in the bookworm based images like Git, curl, make, GCC debugging tools, and more, those are not included in a slim based image. This makes Node slim tags an appealing option for many developers and different use cases. Now, you might be wondering, how do you see a breakdown of what's included in these various images? Well, you can go to Docker Hub or the respective repositories for those Docker images to analyze the Docker file that's used and responsible for building the image. Another way is to pull the image you want locally onto your machine, run a container with that image, and then you can execute relevant commands within the container to list out all the installed libraries and packages that are used within it. An example of that would be running a command like apt list hyphen hyphen install. Moving on to another image option, we have Node Alpine. This image is based on the Alpine Linux operating system. It's known for its small size, which is about five megabytes, but it comes with challenges such as limited libraries and potential compatibility issues. Specifically, the libc library that's used in Alpine, which is MUSL, is being used instead of what's common in the other images, which is glibc and related libraries. This can cause issues depending on the libc requirements of your application. Another set of image options are distroless images. These are images without a formal operating system and it's focused on specific programming languages. These contain only your application and its runtime dependencies in this case. They're secure and lightweight, but they require a good understanding of the dependencies and configurations you need for your application. Something to note is these distroless images are managed by Google through their container registry, and that is now moving to their new artifact registry. So just a heads up in case you're looking for where they might move, or at the time of watching this video, they're no longer at the Google container registry, go to artifact registry. With all that covered, let's take a broad look at these image options we just discussed. In comparison, we see a spectrum of trade-offs between image size, dependency counts, security vulnerabilities, and compatibility. The right choice depends on your project's specific requirements and constraints. In conclusion, for most users, Node and the LTS version, Bookworm Slim, so Node 20.11 Bookworm Slim as of right now, offers a good balance for us all. However, if you're up for it, creating your own distroless based image could be the ultimate solution for balancing security, performance, and functionality. Last but not least, to make sure you stay secure and aware of any new security issues that arise in the images you depend upon, you sneak. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with a colleague who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the next video. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding. Everybody.